today's video it's all about the defects on this casting and as you can see I've marked all the defects and there's plenty of them no shortage of them and this is the drag side and over on the other side on the cope side it is even worse I do have a vague idea on why these defects happen so I'm gonna ask all the YouTube experts out there tell me why do these defects occur put it into the comments and what I'll do I'll give you a lot of close-ups and detailed looks at the casting and the defects so you can make your decision so here is some of the scrap aluminium that causes all these problems and this is the cylinder head what happens with them they always give trouble some are worse than others some are better than others but they still will give you a lot of trouble and that goes the same for virtually every automotive casting except for one which i'll deal with later on in the video here is another automotive scrap aluminium that causes that defect uh, alternator housing and a starter motor housing and what happens they sometimes do it and sometimes they don't which means they use a different alloy so I just don't use that alloy at all bell housing it sometimes causes that defect and sometimes it does not so again don't use it So what I'm going to do now is use another pattern and recreate this defect. And what I suspect is happening is the sand may be too wet. I'm going to use an ultra dry green sand so it doesn't lift up the metal and we'll see what happens. The drag half of the mould has been rammed up so what I intend to do is the left hand side or the left hand half I will vent and the right hand side I won't vent and we'll see if there's any difference when I knock out the mould. And the funny thing is I see on YouTube everyone vents the cope but never the drag. The cope half has been rammed up and the same deal again. I'll be venting this side, the left hand side, and leaving the right hand side unvented. And we'll see what happens when we knock out the casting and see if there's more defects on one side than the other. have a look at the top of the sprue 
and also the ingot and when you see those odd shaped depressions on there you know that the casting is going to be full of defects and you've used the wrong alloy and what will happen yes you got to re-pour that casting again This is what the casting looks like after it's come out of the mould and you'll see the V on the left hand side of the casting and that means that side was vented and then when you look at both sides there's no difference whatsoever. This is the cope side and there you can see the V that is the left hand side of the casting where I've vented and around all those areas where I'm pointing to it's really bad and that's where the sand broke away because it was too dry but always on the cope side this defect is really really bad So this is the scrap aluminium that caused so many problems with the two castings in this video. It was given to me by a friend, they're four hubcaps, and to me they are the best scrap metal you can melt because they are clean. And we'll flip it over. So I had no idea this would cause so many problems. So this is the go-to scrap aluminium that I use for many years. But there is just one problem with it. It takes a lot of work to cut them up into small pieces so they'll fit inside your crucible. And this is why I use that unknown scrap thinking it wasn't a problem because I couldn't be bothered cutting up a car rim and see what trouble it caused me. Here is another scrap aluminium that I use and it doesn't give the defects shown in my video. It is the bicycle rim. Now there's one thing with them I use a piece of wire in the center. You can see the magnet sticking. You have to cut that out because there's heavy gauge steel wire in there. I was going to end the video here, but I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could break the casting, which had the defects and the ingot, and then have a look at the grain structure? And I'm really glad I did. Because what it looks like is happening is the alloy is segregating out and parts of it are floating to the cope or the top surface of the casting. Anyway, I've got over 200 kilograms of this scrap. I don't want any more. I'm going to throw it out. I don't know why I've saved it up over the years. And now I've got plenty of car rims and bicycle rims. And this should last me for years with defect-free castings.